Throughout the late 1970s, the constant change among the feeder program teachers began to concern Norman Woodall. In 1980-81, Assistant Director Jack Mallard was reassigned as the Gresham Director, but left teaching the following year. I had been teaching since 1975 as an Assistant Director at Holston High School. My first real connection with Norman Woodall was when he and Jack Mallard first hired me in summer 1980 to write Central's marching band arrangements. In spring 1981, Mr. Woodall had been reading various possible festival works and had begun work on one piece. However, in early February, he read Pineapple Paul, a work based on the operettas of Gilbert and Sullivan, and he and the band enjoyed it so much that he changed his plans. The band worked up this grade six number in only four or five weeks, earning a superior. In fall 1981, Mr. Woodall again asked me to write the music for the marching band. The band's performance at the UT contest that year was filmed, then converted to video. Here are a few excerpts. I think the band sounds very strong, and I also think the arrangements hold up pretty well too, considering I wrote them almost 25 years ago. Listen for the trumpet solo in the first example. That trumpet soloist I mentioned was Chris Alford. Chris was in the band 1979 to 1982. He would later get a master's degree in musicology, serve as the artistic director of the Knoxville Symphony, then enter the music ministry. Hi there, my name is Dr. Chris Alford and I'm the worship pastor at Fair Oaks Presbyterian Church in Fair Oaks, California, just outside Sacramento. When I think back to my days in the Central High School Band, I uh, have a lot of good memories, band camp and performances and good friends. But the thing I think about the most is Norman Woodall. Norman was a, a big influence in my life. My association with Norman began long before I was in the high school band. I remember I was a fourth grader at Fountain City Elementary School. And that was the year that you got to pick out an instrument and be in the band if you wanted to be. So I remember toward the first of the year, all of the kids in the school who were ready to start band gathered in the gymnasium. And we were all excited. I even had my trumpet that very first day. I guess I had already picked it out at the store and I was ready to go. And after a few minutes, a very tall and elegant man walked into the gymnasium. Starting that year and going all the way through my high school years and even beyond, Norman was a great, great influence on me. But the patience and, and the time that he took with students was really incredible. Norman and I were friends long after I got out of the band. I helped with uh, marching band and occasionally brought my trumpet up to do sectionals and that kind of thing. But even into his latter years of teaching and after retirement, we uh, maintained a good friendship. I'll never forget him. And the truth is, there's not a week that goes by that I don't think about him. There's a 
a picture of him, actually two in my office that I keep, and uh, they're just reminders of a good friend and a great mentor, and um, I appreciate what he did for me. He did a lot of things for the community. A lot of kids passed through his program, but the impact he made on me, I'll never forget. Let me tell you a little bit about what it was like to be in band with Norman Woodall. Because there were times, and you know what I'm talking about, that we didn't play very much, but we just did a lot of listening. Norman loved to talk. And I can remember many times in band when he would say, well, let me tell you a little bit about what I'm thinking. Or he would say, I want to explain to you what it's like when you get to college. But as I look back now, I'm so glad that we had those chances to hear from him. I remember one thing in particular that he always said. He said, I want you to know, students, I'm not any smarter than you are. I just have a little more experience. And he used to share that experience with us all the time. Chris graduated the spring before I came to Central and has been a truly good friend. That 81-82 year was a difficult one for Mr. Woodall. Due to staffing problems, the program was cut back to only two directors, and for part of the year, he had to teach all classes at both Gresham and Central with no assistance. Despite these problems, the band did receive a superior rating that year at festival, performing Lincolnshire Posey again with the top band. Norman was able to get an interim director assigned to Gresham to finish the year and began looking seriously for an assistant who was willing to commit to the program for a longer term. Due in part to our collaboration on marching music for two years, he asked me to consider a transfer from Holston to Central. I was ready for a position change, and the chance to work with such an outstanding program and director was very exciting. I started at Gresham and Central in fall 1982. From that time until Norman's retirement in 1999, I usually wrote the arrangements and ran the playing rehearsals. Norman usually hired a drill writer who also helped teach the drill at band camp. Norman ran the marching rehearsals, did the concert band, and taught at Fountain City and Shenandoah Elementaries every morning. I did Inskip and Sturkey Elementaries in the morning, assisted at Central in the middle of the day, then went to Gresham. Despite the large program we had and years spent lobbying for an additional position, it would be the late 1990s before we again had a third instructor in the program. Here are several photographs taken that first year, summer 1982, at band camp at Maryville College. Again, Colbert Petrie still had his youngest daughter, Amy, in the band at Central, and he took these photographs that year. That was a good year. Among other things, I reorganized the jazz ensemble, and we did our first performance in December for the rest of the band students. We also won first place and several other awards that year at the Dogwood Arts Jazz Festival in the novice category. In those years, the band often played for the community at the annual Honor Fountain City Day festivities in the park. I took these shots in May 1983. I wish I could remember all the background information on this pose. This shows the officers for 82-83, and they put a lot of thought into this photograph. These two students represented Norman and his wife, Rita, complete with baton and the band's plaque from band festival that year. The student with the saxophone neck strap represented me. The shorts and flip-flops on this student represent area band director Ken Jarnigan, who wrote our drill that year and taught it at band camp. The student in the drum major hat represents Ed Nichols, UT drum major who did his student teaching with us that year. The crooked glasses represent one of my predecessors as Gresham band director. The megaphone represents the drill writer at camp the previous year. And I'm sure I've missed a few more of the inside jokes in this picture. This was a truly intelligent, creative group of students and I really wish I had been associated with them for more than just one year. This student is Joe Miller. Joe went into choral music and taught briefly in Knox County. While still in the Knoxville area, he served as our color guard instructor for several years and even wrote our marching band drill for a time. He is currently the director of choral studies at Western Michigan University 
and was the Tennessee All-State Chorus Conductor in spring 2004. His older brother John is the current principal of Central. For 1983-1984, we still attended band camp at Maryville College. Ken Jarnigan again wrote our drill, and the drum major was trumpet player David Thurman. You may remember his father was the drum major for fall 1951. There have been other families with two central drum majors, but the Thurmans are the only father-son drum major combination. During this period, Norman became increasingly frustrated with the inability to divide the band into smaller groups for band festival. He kept attempting to take the entire group in grade six, but with limited success. Most directors agree that it's impossible to play such complex music with a group that is large, although the group continued to earn consistent superior ratings in sight reading. Also in 1984, Norman began to realize that the uniforms from his first year, 1971, were wearing out, and the design also seemed dated. In the late 1970s, the fashion and uniforms shifted to a much less military style. So, during the 83-84 school year, fundraising began toward a replacement set. This annual photo of the 84-85 officers shows Colbert Petrie's daughter Amy in her senior year. Many bands give an award to the most outstanding senior band student. When Norman Woodall came to Central, that award was renamed the Odell Willis Band Award. And Amy Petrie, who also made Allstate on clarinet that year, was the recipient. Among the other officers in this photograph is Carrie Cooch. I had started Carrie on trumpet when I taught in the Holston area. He was the drum major that year, and his parents, Jerry and Carolyn Cooch, headed the fundraising drive for the new uniforms. They worked tirelessly for months, assisted by many other parents, and received special recognition for their support at a football game that fall of 1984. The uniform style Norman chose was much more colorful than the previous model, but retained the same pants and hats to reduce the cost. We marched in the Veterans Day parade downtown that November and decided the Civic Auditorium would make a nice backdrop for a group photo with the new uniforms. Norman lined them up the way he wanted them, and here's the resulting photograph. Mr. Woodall took a 100-piece group to festival that year, earning a superior in grade 5 on Prelude, Siciliano, and Rondo. This view from a fall 1985 football game is one familiar to decades of marching band members, lining up for the pregame show at a home ball game. We were gradually modernizing the style of the marching band during those years, and I even did an original Latin jazz composition for the halftime show that fall. Norman took the band to festival in grade six again that year, earning an excellent rating on Suite of Old American Dances. The student teacher to the left of Norman is Shelley Tipps, daughter of longtime UT music education faculty, Dr. Wayne Tipps. These photos from the mid-80s show a halftime performance and the new look of color guard uniforms, hats positioned carefully so as not to muss that 1980s big hair look. Other events from the 1980s included all the Knoxville area bands participation in the opening ceremonies for the 1982 World's Fair downtown. We practiced a massed band performance and here's band supervisor Jack Cannell, Dwight Christian, and Jay Julian from UT. In the mid-1980s, Norman was elected vice president of the National Band Association. The group's national conference was held in Knoxville in both 1984 and 1986, and Norman and Jay Julian served as the local hosts. There was always a national high school honors band, and Norman selected the students for this group from audition tapes sent in from around the country. This photo shows him introducing the honors band at their performance. The Tennessee State University Jazz Ensemble was selected to perform at the conference. They arrived in town somehow minus their first tenor player and asked me to fill in on their concert. This was lots of fun. I had played in many musical groups locally for years. Here's an outdoor performance of the Ray Brooks Big Band. The saxophone on the far right is Jerry Coker, 
longtime jazz instructor at UT. And the second alto is Colbert Petrie. Performance trips with bands, often taken in the spring as an incentive and reward for the students, are always a mixed blessing for the directors. According to Norman, Odell Willis never slept when he took the band on trips. He stayed up all night to keep an eye out for mischief-making students. We took one of these trips to Florida in fall 1987. We had a great trip, won many awards for the performances of both the concert and jazz bands, and the band has continued trips such as this every second or third year to this day. We had been using a single drum major for years, sometimes male, sometimes female, but for 86, 87 we selected two. We continued this practice for several years, picking a senior and a junior. The idea was that the junior would get experience that would make them an even better conductor if they were selected again their senior year. The two students that first year were Kelly Gwynn and Mike Asbury. Kelly was a clarinet player, and Mike was a seventh grader at Gresham the first year I came. I switched him to bassoon there, and he developed into an outstanding musician. Uh, Mike Asbury, I was in the band at Central High School from 1984 to 1988, uh, playing the bassoon and also being drum major for a couple of years, the last two years there under Norman Woodall. I got my start in the band program at Gresham Junior High School, middle school, um, playing the bassoon with David Dixon. Kelly Gwynn and I were drum majors the first year that, uh, yeah. that I did it, and then the next year I was co-drum majors with Grady Huff. Well, when I first met Norman here at, at Gresham Middle School, um, it was intimidating. You know, he kind of had that presence of just being this guy that had been around forever who um, uh, kind of called the shots and knew what was going on. And then going to Central um, uh, was intimidating because, you know, you're new and young and you're the youngest ones going in and you've got band camp, which at the time, you know, was hundreds of miles away at Maryville College. Or at least it seemed that way so, when I was so that what did age. You do in marching band? Uh, the first two years, I was a bass drummer. A concert band was something he took very seriously, and there was almost a reverence to it. I got a musical foundation that started with David Dixon, and Norman took and built on top of that. I mean, not that I stopped learning about music, because I didn't, but he built on top of that about, you know, common sense things and basically that it's always okay to do the right thing. And uh, I think, you know, most of the lessons that I've taken away from the time that I spent with Norman Woodall have nothing to do with music. There are some that have to do with music appreciation, and, but more that have to do with life lessons and how to behave. <laughs> I will tell you that if, if I have, I think I do, if I have any leadership skills today, it started right there. My first opportunities at leadership were there. And it's, it's really carried through with me and served me to today. You know, it's funny because there were times when, uh, when Norman could cut up and be really funny. And, uh, but it was always unexpected because you didn't necessarily relate Norman Woodall with funny. And, um, but, you know, because he was, he was very serious in rehearsal and he took music very seriously and he wanted the students to take music very seriously. And, um, and when people weren't taking it seriously, I think he took it personally. It offended him. But then sometimes he would cut up and you'd, you know, get a taste of Norman as he was when he wasn't in front of a band, which was just a guy. One of my fondest memories is making Allstate uh, the first time that I made it. I think Allstate was in Memphis that year. And that was the year that uh, I guess the choir and the band students went at the same time for Allstate. And uh, that's when... Um, Norman treated us all, all of the choir students and the band students, and then Becky Thomas, who was the choir director, to uh, dinner at Justine's. And, uh, you know, poor kid from Inskip had never been to a restaurant like Justine's. So, uh, so Norman kind of gave us the heads up of what to do with what fork, and the napkin goes in the lap, and here's what you're going to wear to dinner. And so we did, and had one of the best meals I've ever had in my life and uh, found out in retrospect that uh, uh, Norman paid for the entire dinner. He treated everyone. Not only was Mike an all-state bassoonist, he also made a unique contribution to Norman Woodall's last
grade six superior at concert festival. When we were, I guess, when we were first sight reading the music to, I guess Norman was trying to assess whether or not this band would be able to pull this off. And that's when uh, you and Norman uh, said, you know, do you want to learn to play the English horn? And I was like, sure, okay. And so, so I learned to play just this solo piece that, you know, that is a part of uh, Feast Day in Seville. So I'm sitting there and at some point I put the bassoon down and I pick up the English horn and play the solo part and put it down and pick up the bassoon. And, and what I remember is being really proud when, first of all, we'd gotten great scores. And second of all, uh, the judges recorded their comments and, oh, nice bassoon. Oh, and you play the English horn too. So, you know, a couple of things that, that I got from Norman that I think have helped me in my business career. One is being a team player, because I didn't do team sports or anything like that. So being in a, in a band ensemble was the first exposure I'd have to being on a team. So not just working with other people, but listening, you know, to hear how you fit in with other people and, um, and then being given the opportunity to lead a team, which I do today. I, I really don't think I'd be able to do that today if I hadn't had that exposure then. But one day we were rehearsing that piece of music and uh, Norman said, Mike, I'm gonna go back in the back and listen. Get up here and conduct this. So I did that. I got up and conducted the piece of music. He let me actually conduct that piece of music on the concert. That was cool. <laughs> that was important. Before we can leave Mike, there's one final picture that can't be omitted. For Spirit Week, the week of homecoming, Mike's senior year, there were the usual funny dress-up days. I can't remember the exact theme for this day, but it was obviously Nerd Day or something similar. An annual photographer got Norman to pose with Mike before band rehearsal on the parking lot that day. The student in the yellow shirt is Brian New, another excellent saxophone player. His father spent a period as a central assistant principal and Brian has been a cameraman for a local television station for years. I see him often covering central football games. The student in red is another excellent bassoon and saxophone player who was only one year behind Mike Asbury in school, Jason Robinson. Following in Mike's footsteps, Jason was the drum major in fall 1988 along with Catherine Canan. Jason went to UT, became active in the theater department, learned stage lighting skills, and went to work for the internationally famous Bandit Lights in Knoxville. He has served as a lighting tech for many famous entertainers, including Garth Brooks. Garth had always wanted to learn to play sax, so Jason got him started. Garth later played sax solos on several albums and in concerts. So, thanks to Jason, I can now say that a former student of mine taught Garth Brooks to play saxophone. These late 1980s bands also included another of Norman's favorite students, outstanding horn player Robert Owen. Robert later worked at Rush's music store, and he also helped us write drill for the marching band during band camp for a number of years. The 1989-1990 drum majors were Jenny King and Chuck Creighton, and the third generation of the Mize family, Jeff, was now in the band. I had started him as a beginner in the fourth grade at Sturkey Elementary. Well, I'm Jeff Mice. I was in the band from 88 to 91. Uh, never had the pleasure of meeting Mr. Willis, but I've heard a lot of stories about him. But under Mr. Woodall, I, I can imagine it was very similar to the same tight ship that Mr. Willis ran. Uh, Mr. Woodall had total control of the program at all times, and you just sort of did what was expected of you. And I don't remember any major problems out of anybody. It was, there was a lot of camaraderie and a lot of respect at that time. And uh, some of the greatest, uh, the best memories that I have from high school are from the band. I think Norman and Odell had a lot the same personality and they commanded the same respect, not just in this area, but band directors all over. Um, an interesting experience that, that was really eye-opening for me. I knew everybody knew Norman and Norman knew everybody. But my senior year when I made Allstate, uh, we went to Nashville and uh, Colonel John Bourgeois, who is the conductor of the President's Marine Band, was the conductor at Allstate that year. And it's just you know, amazing honor to be able to play under the guy that's conducting the Marine Band. But we get there and signing up and he's showing us where our rooms are and all this kind of thing. And down in the lobby, here comes 
Colonel Bourgeois, hello, Norman. <laughs> and there's a guy that I couldn't even, you know, I'm, I'm just glad to be playing in his band, much less to meet him. Come and let me introduce you to my students, and, and we get to meet him, and, oh, you're going to take them to dinner tonight? Oh, yeah, they, they carry on this real casual conversation like they're old friends, and I'm sure they were. And, uh, you know, he just, he knew everybody. Another neat thing about Norman, and, well, you were the same way as a band director. A lot of band directors, once they become director, they lose their playing chops. And uh, that, that was always fun when Mr. Woodall would sit in with us in jazz band, he'd pull out his bass guitar. Um, a couple of years we, we had a, a brass quintet that we'd get together. And uh, of course after Robert Owen graduated, he was two years older than me, we lost a French horn player. And uh, Norman would sit in with us with his French horn and, and keep us going. And was a better player than any of us for sure. Fittingly, Jeff Mize was the Odell Willis Band Award recipient in spring 1991. 65 years after his grandfather, Beecher Mize, joined the central band as a tuba player. This 89-90 band also included Sean Cooch, an exceptional drummer and younger brother of Kerry Cooch, mentioned earlier. Also, David Carell from the early 1960s bands had just moved back to Knoxville, and his son Billy was one of the tuba players in this group. As the 1980s ended, Ann Robinson, younger sister of Jason Robinson, was the drum major twice, in fall 1990 with Scott Bowman, and in fall 1991 with Michael Kitts. The band continued to earn superior ratings at band festival, and I greatly enjoyed my first decade with the band. We had so many outstanding students who I have such fond memories of today. To all those in the band in the 80s, I can say that Norman and I both enjoyed every minute with you.